Welcome to Keto Life Support, where we make your keto life sustainable, fun, and low stress. I'm Kim Howerton, and I'll be coming to you weekly with some of my keto besties to bring you the practical, real-world keto advice that you need. Quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor, and even if we do have a doctor in the house from time to time, he or she is not your doctor, and nothing we say on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always check in with a trusted medical professional about your own personal medical concerns. Hello, welcome to Keto Life Support. This is Kim Howerton. This is episode 152. And today we're going to be talking top 10 food lists. I just thought I would update you with some of my favorite things, and that includes both meals and things I buy. This might help some of you that are feeling a little stuck with what to cook, what to make, what to buy. And while they're not comprehensive lists, there are certainly things that are not on these lists that I regularly buy. These are probably my most important have to haves and have to makes on the regular. So I made a few different categories. I tried to keep each one to about 10 items. Let's dive in. Oh, and I will say that anything that has a recipe I have or I am putting on my website at kimhowerton.com at recipes. All right, so you can check them out there. But the first category, not recipes, it's produce. So produce I regularly buy. We've got, uh, in no particular order, cucumbers. I love cucumbers. I love cucumbers. I love especially Persian cucumbers, you know, the little tiny ones. Um, But I also really like English cucumbers. I don't love as much the garden cucumbers with a really thick skin, but I will peel them and enjoy them that way as well. Did you know that there are more carbs in the skin as well, of a, especially of a garden cucumber? So the thinner skin your cucumber has, the less carbs does, not to split hairs. I'm including under the cucumber category pickles because I am a huge pickle fan. I adore pickles. So pickles, pickle relish, anything pickle is getting included in my cucumber category. I would say probably if I had to pick one vegetable to have on hand, it would be cucumbers. All right. Let's say the second one is lettuce, specifically either romaine or iceberg. I like my lettuce to crunch. I do not like field greens. Do not really like escarole. I don't like ones that feel like I'm eating weeds. Yeah. You don't even really like arugula that much. Although in certain circumstances, arugula is fabulous. It's got such a nice peppery bite to it, but I I certainly don't like a big salad of it. All right. Third, bell peppers. Always been a big fan. Actually, I probably ate more bell peppers earlier in my keto journey, but every time I have a bell pepper, I love it. So, well, it's it's a good one, obviously. Only good vegetables. You You know the difference, right? The ones that don't have any flavor, not even worth it. But I love a good bell pepper. Um, I use a lot of cauliflower rice. I go through phases with cauliflower rice, but it's been a staple recently. It's super useful and I've been using it. So cauliflower rice, easy to keep in the freezer too for when nothing else is available. Onions. I use a lot of onions. I know me and Nisha, but um, I probably don't use as many as her, or maybe it's just by comparison because I use more vegetables in general, but onions, essential. Zucchini. Big lover of zucchini, especially like shredding it or cutting it up or doing all sorts of things with zucchini. Olives, I think are number seven. I think we're at seven. I use especially green olives. I put a lot of them in salads. They're a nice little flavor punch. I wasn't going to include number eight, except I started making this chicken salad a lot that requires celery. So now celery is on my list. And every time I eat celery, I think I really enjoyed that. So maybe it's just that I don't eat it a lot. So I enjoy it. But celery is indeed on my most used list. Number nine is spinach. And I know I will get eggs thrown at me by the oxalate people, but I seem to be just fine under my oxalate tolerance. I believe we all have a bit of a different range of tolerance on that. And so I include spinach. And I am counting berries as my number 10 because I am grouping all berries under berries. I get to make the rules because I made the list. So that is number 10 on my produce list. I'm adding a bonus 11, which is when they're in season, tomatoes. I do not mess with tomatoes out of season. Winter tomatoes are just sad. 
But when tomatoes are in season, you bet they are on my shopping list all the time. So those are my top 10-ish list of produce that I buy on the regular. All right, the next category I'm calling meat, egg, milk. It's sort of the other stuff I buy at the store. Eggs being first on the list, I use a ton of eggs. Oh, by the way, eggs, I use both egg whites and whole eggs, depending on what I'm doing. And if I want to bump up my protein, a really easy hack is to add extra egg whites. So I will buy cartons of egg whites because I don't like the I don't like to separate the eggs and then throw away the yolks. That just seems so sad because the yolks are so good. So I buy both eggs and cartons of egg whites. Flank steak is top of my list of steaks that I've been eating of late. Now, when I first started keto, that would have been ribeye instead of flank steak. But I've gone leaner and uh, higher protein. And so flank steak fits the bill really well for me these days, as does tri-tip. So number three, tri-tip. Number four, chicken breast. I don't eat a lot of chicken breast just plain or directly, but I make chicken salad or I process the chicken into like chicken breast pizza. So chicken breast is used a lot. And that's four on my list. Ground beef. I eat a lot of ground beef. Burgers are probably my number one love. So ground beef is number five. The rest are not meat, although I could have gone on and on about meat, but you know, I'm just going with the really popular ones. And uh, the next ones are Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, fair life milk, which is lactose free, low carb milk, but not carb free, but low carb. I put in my coffee. So that had to go on the list. And Parmesan cheese. So those are the 10. Well, no, those are nine. Oh, I have a controversial entry. Again, Nisha Berry would be sad because she thinks this is a sad, sad, sad state of affairs. But since I went higher protein, lower fat, I have included turkey bacon on the list of meat things I stock regularly. Now, hear me out because it's not bacon. It is not bacon. It is a terrible name. It is poorly named. It is a smoked turkey product. So it's useful as a lunch meat. It's useful as a meat to add to the side of breakfast dishes. It's just easy. And it's got kind of a smoky flavor, salty and smoky. So there's flavor there, which makes it really useful to me. But it's not bacon. It does not hold a candle to bacon, but it serves a protein-based need that I have. And so I put it on my list of things that I tend to keep in my fridge. All right. So that was produce and meats. Now I'm moving on to what I will call products. So these are things that I buy. It gets a little messy, right? Because like Greek yogurt is, I buy it, I don't make it, but it feels more like an ingredient than a product, but okay, products. Number one, egg white powder. I use a lot of egg white powder in recipes as well as two other types of protein powder. PE Science is one brand and Keto Chow is another brand and they both make what you might refer to as dairy protein powders. So these are protein powders that are a combination of casein and whey. And when I bake, that is the best baking protein powder to use. So either Keto Chow, the brand, or PE Science, the brand. PE Science does make an unflavored whey and casein blend, which is really great in recipes. So um, those are my, I would say that's probably three protein powders, right? we got the egg white protein, we got the PE Science, we got the Keto Chow, and I use all of them almost exclusively in baking, although I will use a bit of protein powder sometimes in something I'm mentioning later, which is a creamy. All right, the next entry. Lakanto monk fruit drops. It's how I sweeten my coffee. Element electrolytes. I think they're delicious. They dissolve really well. It's a great brand. I love them. And if you want to get some element, you can get it at drinkelement.com forward slash Kim Howerton. Add my name and they give me a little bit of a bonus. So if you've been thinking about trying them, I didn't mean to put an ad in the middle of this episode, but if you've been thinking about trying them, they don't charge you anymore for using my name and they send me a little gift and I would really appreciate it if you would do so. So just putting it in there. And oh, for doing it that way, for using my name, you actually get a free gift too and it doesn't cost you any more money. All right. Cocoa powder is the next thing on my list. I use a fair amount of that. Redmond salt, gotta have it in the cabinet. 
apple cider vinegar and or other vinegars of low carb varieties. Olive oil. I use more olive oil than avocado oil. I don't use very much avocado oil anymore. Egg life wraps are on my little products list. I love the egg life wraps. I love all the flavors. They're very helpful in just easy meal planning and putting together meal prep, I guess I should say. And the last item on my products list, I'm just going with spices in general because you have to have all the spices because they make life better. All right, let's go here. Products is forking off into a category that I hold near and dear to my heart, sauces. Some of you have noticed that I use a lot of sauces. So these are sauces that I buy and a few that I make. And let me tell you about them. So one, no sugar ketchup. I prefer the Heinz brand because I've been a Heinz girl my whole life. We always bought Heinz ketchup growing up. And so the flavor is very familiar and nostalgic for me. So Heinz, no sugar added ketchup. I always have to have Dijon mustard and yellow mustard in the fridge. Uh, G Hughes makes a sweet chili sauce, which is a little bit spicy. And I'm kind of a wimp. So many of you will be like, it's not really spicy, Kim, but it's a little bit spicy. And I use that to make like to I might mix into some ketchup to make a spicy ketchup or mix into some barbecue sauce to make a little spicy barbecue sauce. But if you don't know what sweet chili sauce, if you've ever before you were keto or low carb, you went to a Thai restaurant and there was like little, um, you know, spring rolls and you dip them in that sort of translucent pink sauce red pink red orange pink that's sweet chili sauce very tasty so g hughes makes a sugar-free version i have to order it on amazon because they don't sell it in my store uh speaking of g hughes their barbecue sauce which i can get in my local grocery store so i keep that on hand as well i also like to keep on hand primal kitchens barbecue sauce what's the difference well g hughes is very sweet to me It's a super sweet barbecue sauce. And the Primal Kitchen's barbecue sauce is a little bit spicy. It's got a lot of chili powder in it, I think. And it's not sweet. So if I mix those two together, I kind of get the best of both worlds. So I like to have both of those in-house. Speaking of Primal Kitchen's, again, their steak sauce is out of this world. So I tend to keep Primal Kitchen steak sauce stocked as well. And then a good quality mayo. So a mayo by usually chosen kitchens is my favorite. While I like Primal Kitchens for most things, I don't love the flavor of their mayo. So I go with the chosen foods instead. And sometimes I make my own, but I tend to like to keep one in the fridge just so there's always one and I don't have to get out the little blender anytime I need mayo. The next ones are recipes. So the first one is Thousand Island or burger sauce. And traditionally, Thousand Island is basically mayo, ketchup, and pickle relish. But I like to add a little more protein, make it go a little further by adding a little bit of Greek yogurt. And then I add a little salt. And I add a teeny bit of yellow mustard, which kind of makes it a little more like a that burger sauce kind of thing. But it can really spark up the flavor. Then the next sauce that I make on the regular is going to be, oh, and for the Thousand Island, I my favorite thing to do is to put it on burgers, uh, but you can use it as a dressing. Uh, for a dressing, like I probably thin it down a bit with some vinegar. Then we've got honey mustard sauce. Love that, which is just basically a little Dijon mustard and some yogurt and some mayo. And I just thought of something that I didn't put on my products list that I should have. We're backing up and we're adding stevia glycerite. All right. Sorry about that, guys. But I will reread everything at the end of this episode. So the next one is Chick-fil-A sauce. So I make a dupe Chick-fil-A sauce, but I wouldn't call it really a dupe in that it's way better than the Chick-fil-A sauce. Funny story about this one. Um, I'd never had Chick-fil-A sauce and somebody gave me some of a duplicate Chick-fil-A sauce. And I thought, well, this has promise. And I started tinkering with it. And then years later, I think it was years, actually saw a Chick-fil-A. They didn't have them in the area I grew up in. And so I'd never been there. And I tried one of the, I tried the sauce and I thought, this is terrible. My sauce is much better. So I don't know what, it's not a dupe. It's a better than, um, I'm just going to brag on that one. Uh, I'm sure other people have dupes that are also better than, I think, the original sauce. I don't know. You guys just might have a memory of it, but it's kind of a little flat. Anyway, but that one is, that sauce, uh, the one I make is like a little bit of everything. It's some a little bit of Greek yogurt, some mayo, 
some ketchup, some Dijon mustard, some yellow mustard, and some barbecue sauce with a squirt of lemon and a splash of stevia glycerite. So I will put those recipes on my blog. I actually haven't, but it's a good idea. I should put those recipes on my blog. And here is the last category. Recipes and meals that I make on the regular. So number one, burgers. I make burgers all the time. Either I'll eat them bunless or in a lettuce wrap, or I'll make a bun for them, which comes later in the list. Often on the side of that, I just serve sliced up cucumber and bell pepper, like little fries, but not fried. I make a giant salad all the time. So number two on my list, giant salad with meat in it, obviously. Number three, protein pancakes. Number four, frittatas. I go in and out on how many, how much I make a frittata. I'm in a frittata phase right now, but I'm often in a frittata phase. Very useful. Number five, some form of egg-based bread. Now, the history of the egg-based bread. It's a long saga. Maria Emmerich came out with the original, well, hmm, hold on. So once upon a time, there was the oopsie roll or the, uh, the oopsie roll, there's another name for it. Oopsie roll or, oh, I can't remember what else it's called. There's another name though. I'll remember tomorrow and be very upset with myself. So let's just say the oopsie roll, which is a egg-based bread. It's basically that one is eggs and cream cheese. And it was sort of the first known keto bread. And I think I remembered at one point there was a woman who was found to be responsible for it. I will put it in the notes because I can't remember. And she's not really around anymore. The, I don't mean she's deceased, but she's not really around the community anymore. But I remember there was a person. So I will put that in the show notes. Quick update from future Kim. I remembered the other name for oopsie rolls is cloud bread. And apparently it was originally a misunderstanding of a Robert Atkins recipe. So it was made, the original recipe was made with slightly different ingredients. Somebody made it wrong. They liked it better. And then it just continued to be made that way. So that's your history lesson on oopsie bread, cloud bread. Enjoy. Marie Emmerich got very popular with her egg white bread over the past few years. And she calls that her protein sparing modified fast bread. But I use it for all sorts of things that are not protein sparing modified fast related. And I've also changed the recipe. So Indigo Neely is a very smart lady who took the egg bread recipe, made some adjustments to it, and in my opinion, made it really great. And so I love her version of the recipe. And then I made my own version of her version of the recipe. But more recently, I just started from scratch and made something I, I'm going to call protein focaccia. It's more similar to focaccia. It's like a flatbread. Um, I know traditionally we don't make a sweet focaccia, but I make both a sweet and savory version. And those recipes are on my website. So the protein focaccia is what I'm making all the time now both for like almost as a fluffy pancake kind of thing in the sweet version. And then I'll use it as buns for my aforementioned burgers or to make sandwiches with as are coming up next. So sandwich might be something like a BLT using turkey bacon to up the protein a bit, or we've got chicken salad, which is number six next on my list of meals. I make a lot. So chicken salad, very simple, love it recipe on the blog but it's just chicken breast, mayonnaise, Greek yogurt, celery, and pickles, and some spices. Oh, and eggs, hard-boiled eggs. As simple as you can be, but delicious. And I blend it, so it's almost like uh, the texture of tuna salad, and I, I just can't get enough of it. So that is a great recipe I've been making recently. Again, notice nothing complicated here. High-protein cheesecake is on my list of some of my favorite things to make. Now, I will admit I've been making it less since I bought the creamy. So I'm keeping the high protein cheesecake on the list because it's a real winner for getting more protein into your day. But I make Froyo, frozen yogurt, creamies much more often because my boyfriend also loves them and we're just on a big kick of those. So number eight on my list of things I make all the time, Froyo creamies. And that's real simple. It's just Greek yogurt um, and some flavorings, maybe, and maybe a little extra sweetener that I freeze and then I process in the creamy. 
uh, and then I'll throw in some berries if it's like a vanilla or a fruit flavor, or I'll make a chocolate one using vanilla yogurts and a little bit of chocolate protein powder and cocoa powder. And so I'll either make a chocolate creamy or a fruity creamy, make those all the time. So that is eight on my list of things I make all the time. Number nine, I don't know that I would say I make this one all the time, but I make it fairly regularly and it's always a winner, which is lasagna. And number 10, I found out recently that some people don't like meatloaf, but I love meatloaf. So meatloaf goes number 10 on my list. So those are all of the things that I would say I think have been super important to stock in my kitchen, keep me fed, keep me happy, keep me feeling from being, you know, deprived of things I love. So I'm going to go through the list real quick now without commentary so that you can have it. By the way, I will put this out in written form as well. Produce, cucumbers, lettuce, bell peppers, cauliflower, rice, onions, zucchini, olives, celery, spinach, berries, and tomatoes when they're good. Meats and things, eggs, flank steak, tri-tip, chicken breast, ground beef, Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, turkey bacon, fair life, milk, and Parmesan cheese. Egg white powder, PE science, keto chow, those are all types of protein powders. Lakanto sweet drops, and I'm adding stevia glyceride which has a different purpose in sweetening things. I will also add allulose to this list in the sweetener section. And those are the sweeteners that I use. Element electrolytes, cocoa powder, Redmond salt, apple cider vinegar or other vinegars, olive oil, egg life wraps, and spices. Sauces include Heinz ketchup, Dijon mustard, G. Hughes sweet chili sauce, G. Hughes barbecue sauce, Primal Kitchen's barbecue sauce, a good quality mayo, Primal Kitchen Steak Sauce, and recipes for Thousand Island Honey Mustard and Chick-fil-A Noop Sauces. My recipes, burgers, giant salads, protein pancakes, frittatas, some version of an egg bread, currently the egg protein focaccia. Chicken salad, high protein cheesecake, froyo creamies, lasagna, and meatloaf. So thank you for my, uh, I hope people are hungry. Thank you for joining me today on my walk through the foods that I like that might help you think of some things you might also like. Questions, comments, please let me know. I always want to hear from you about things you want to hear about. Take care and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Keto Life Support. Want more information? Want show notes? Want to suggest a topic? Just head over to KetoLifeSupport.com. That's where all that kind of thing can go on. By the way, I have a request. If you could go to your podcast host and hit subscribe, we would really, really appreciate it. And what would be even more awesome is if you could write a review. And what would be even more awesome than that is if you could write like a really flattering review. Just asking, you know, you do you. All right. So thanks so much for joining us. I'm thrilled that you're part of the Keto fam. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.